Okay, movie reviews are not my forte, but people, because of the last video I did, asked me to review Child's Play 2019. So I basically deemed it the worst movie of the decade. I was definitely of the year. It's gotta be for me, the worst movie of the year. Worst movie of the decade. I really wanna know what autistic, brain damaged, you know, fucking Down syndrome patient wrote this piece of shit on a piece of paper. Um, and like I said in my last video, like I would have respected the director more if he just called the movie Child's Play. You see, at the very beginning of the credits, you see a uh, uh, like a plate and then a steaming pile of his shit. Like he just shits on a plate and we're forced to watch it and that's the movie Child's Play. It would have been more entertaining. Okay, so um, I don't even know where we're beginning with this. Let's start with the doll design. All right, you saw the original Child's Play came out in 1988, fine. That doll still holds up. The Chucky doll, especially when he's a good guy, normal doll, He's just, you know, kind of creepy, cherubic-looking ginger doll. And, you know, ginger's scary anyway, but we don't judge. All right, so um, they decided to update the look of this doll to make him... Okay, remember how Michael Jackson looked normal when he was black? And then he turned into, a, like, a 56-year-old downtown Chicago white lady who's pulled back, like, beyond belief? That's what they decided to do with the good guy doll, except now it's called a buddy doll. And it can do a bunch of things like link itself to apps. It can control your... Your, your thermostat, it can control an automated car that's supposed to get you, It's a, it can control uh, the lighting in your house. Okay, plot point problem number one. Why the fuck would a kid, a child, that's what this buddy doll is aimed to, and they try to make it like, you know, it's like the toy of the, of the season. It's like getting a new PlayStation or a new cell phone or something like that. There's a new one every year, and it's got more features. Why would a kid need access to the fucking, uh, to the lights, to the heat, to a car. They can't even drive. It makes no sense for a kid to have this toy whatsoever. All right, be that as it is. Um, so it starts off with, they decided to do a totally different direction of this movie. And I've seen YouTubers and Cody Leach and everybody else giving this a good review and said, well, it was a fresh take. Uh, yeah, well, that would be like me remaking Gone with the Wind and making it, you know, a bunch of morbidly obese blind people having sex with each other and calling it Gone with the Wind. It's a fresh take. It doesn't mean it's a good take. It means it's crap. This was garbage. So, beginning of this movie, which I did miss because I told you in my last one I was kind of late, like five minutes, but I saw it on YouTube. And trust me, if you want to watch it all, it's all over YouTube. Just watch parts of it, put it together, you'll see how bad it is. I would rather, wa rather watch, like, I don't know, a very, very fat woman's tampon that's fully full of, like, summer blood and crust. I'd rather watch that dry, where I, even right here, where I could, like, smell it, than watch this piece of garbage again. So, um, the beginning of the movie, there's this Korean, they decided to go a different way. It's not some doll that gets possessed by a serial killer. It's a doll that has options to be bad or swear or not. This guy's in a sweatshop making them. Some guy co comes over, yells at him in Japanese or Korean, whatever. Same thing to me. You know, the, that grating. So, um, basically the guy decides he's had enough. He looks at the doll, removes all the safety features. First of all, why would you put safety feet? Why would you even make the ability for it to possibly do dangerous things, violence? That's what he removes. You see on the computer, removing the violence code. Fuck you. Removing the swearing code. Like, no sense. It makes no sense. Okay. So removes all that, and then he goes and jumps out a window. That's that's it. That's your introduction to the buddy doll. And then this, we're introduced to the kid. The kid is about 12 to 13 years old. He's annoying as all can be. He's deaf or he's part deaf. They never really go into why he's got a hearing aid. It's just going to make for a plot point later. And he's being raised by, and he's like a, you know, a ne'er-do-well kid. He's not really fitting in. He lives in the hood. I love how they make like the hood, you know, it's just some random like tenement building, but a bunch of like, all the kids dress really well there. There's no sign of poverty really. Like people can afford buddy dolls and stuff, but they're living in the hood. They're, they're hood shit like that. I mean, there's no drive-bys or anything. They can go play outside and all that, but it's the hood. And then we meet Aubrey Plaza, and what can I say about her acting ability? Like, um, <clears throat> like, used condoms probably can get a better performance than Aubrey Plaza, who literally does this the entire movie. First of all, what is she looking at up here? She's always doing this number. Ha, uh, Andy, I got you a doll. I got you a doll even though you're 12 and you probably shouldn't even be playing with dolls because I think you're a homosexual, Andy. Do you want to fuck the doll? It's safe sex. <laughs> she's always doing this shit. She always looks like she's just had a thought and she can't remember what the thought was. Like, I'm supposed to do something. Get the keys to the car now. Make a terrible movie. Okay, covered. 
like, what, what the fuck is going on up here? I kept looking up at the screen to see if there were like something dangling, like she saw the boom mic or something like that. So she decides to get him a refurbished buddy doll. Okay, I'll go with it. And this doll is creepy right away, but not creepy as in creepy scary. Oh my God, it's going to come live. It's got like USB ports in it. It's like, you can, like I said, download apps. He has to connect it to his cell phone. Already I'm bored. I'm just bored at this point. Like, why, why is this a thing? Why is this happening? So the doll comes alive and it's voiced by Mark Hamill, who apparently is just giving up on doing any other voice other than his sinister voice, which sounds like pretty much his regular voice going, ah, ooh, I'm evil Mark Hamill. Now I'm happy Mark Hamill. There's no fucking difference. There's no difference whatsoever. There's none. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. And uh, he comes across like, okay, I'm just going to say it. Buddy, the buddy doll here right away comes to like, hi, what's your name? My name is Buddy. Can I be your best friend? They don't treat you right, Andy. I like you. Andy, I want to give you a hug and watch you sleep. I kept worrying Buddy was going to fuck the kid. There, I said it. That's right. I kept worrying Buddy was a pedophile. Buddy was too weird. I kept waiting for him to catch Andy. He's watching Andy sleep. And it wasn't like sinister, like, I'm going to kill this fucker. Like, he was like, I love him so much. He's so pretty. I just like, It's that kind of like, trust me, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But he's got that very creepy, like, you know, your uncle who used to try to touch you, but you would let him because, you know, he'll give you popsicles type of vibe. You know what I mean? Never happened to me. Anyway, um, so, yeah, I kept waiting for him to, like, see, he was, like, following Andy, Andy, he'll just appear, and that's another thing with this doll. It's set in the present time, as far as I know, but this doll can fully walk around the house, and everybody's like, it's normal, pick up your car keys, he can, like, sit there on the counter, he's just kind of like a person that lives in your house. Bullshit! Fucking bullshit. And pretty soon, he sees, like, a cat scratch Andy, and he's like, oh, okay, uh, I have to kill this cat now because it hurt my friend, hurt my special friend. This doll seems gay. I'm sorry, he seems like the gayest, he looks, first of all, the doll looks like a mime. It looks like a mime version of the original Chucky. And he's just like, did, what, what did that doll do to you, Andy? What did it do to you? He's like, oh yeah, the cat hurt me, it sucks. The cat hurt Andy, my friend? I was waiting for him to go, bitch, you know? And so he's strangling the cat at one point. Eventually he kills the cat. We all know that's what's going to happen because it's a stupid-ass movie. And uh, I, kept, I kept waiting for Andy to be, like, peeing or something like that and be like, Andy, what's that between your legs? Do I have a ding-dong between my legs? Does, what is, is that the thing that gets hard at night when you're sleeping and points up like this and makes it look like you're pitching a tent and you're blanky? Andy, let's explore it together. <laughs> what the fuck is this bullshit? So right away, the doll starts killing people. And, like, in the most ludicrous ways, like, Andy has, uh, his, uh, mom, of course, has bad judgment in men. What a shock. And, uh, that's Aubrey, Aubrey Plaza's big scene, is her, like, she's having difficulty with her boyfriend. Her boyfriend, like, whips Andy's ass almost at one point and threatens him. We find out her boyfriend is married. And this is, this is how good of a mom she is. She finds out, if somebody fucking, if my girlfriend or whatever yelled at my kid and it didn't come out of your pussy or didn't come from you at all, I will beat your ass with a fucking iron. And if I don't have an iron, I will go and buy one and then come back, find you and beat your ass with it. That ain't gonna happen. She's like, next time you're gonna yell at my son, talk to me. It's like he doesn't know you. Talk to me. Andy, Andy, why are you mad? Andy, Andy, I had a thought. I, had, I just had a, it's gone, it's gone. So, <laughs> so basically the plot becomes this buddy doll, Chucky, who names himself Chucky for no apparent reason. Uh, literally at one point you're supposed to name the doll by saying a name and he goes, Han Solo, he goes, so my name's Chucky. And kid's like, I'll roll with it, whatever. And then he meets his group of friends who literally just because become his friends one day. Like, they haven't talked to him. They have nothing to do with him. They see him talking to a buddy doll. They're like, oh my God, we're friends now. So we're all going to be like Stranger Things or it or kind of, sort of. I don't know. I don't even know why the kids are in this movie. I have no idea why other than to react to the doll. That's it. So the doll gets worse and worse. There's a detective that lives across the hall. Uh, people get killed through various ways. One person is killed by a lawnmower that he can control, although... It's not linked to the Caslin Bluetooth system. I hope this makes sense to people. There's, it's not, like, linked to the cloud, so I don't know how he's able to control a fucking lawnmower. I didn't see him pushing it, but whatever, okay. Um, he's able to turn up the heat on pipes, so if somebody's holding onto the pipe, they fucking, you know, fall off. Again, I don't know why a child would need that ability for a doll to turn up the heat. That's what your fucking parents are for. And it just gets to the point at the end... And, 
at the end where it's just like this like shit fest of like Furbies coming up. Remember those dolls, Furbies? It was like evil Furbies coming alive. And apparently if you're a Chucky doll, you can make other Chucky dolls come alive and chase people around this grand opening. By the way, let's talk about the grand opening. It's like a ghetto Kmart. It's like a ghetto Target or something. It's not like any place they would have a grand opening for the release of a new doll because every motherfucker in that neighborhood would steal that shit. And look at the movie if you don't believe me. It's in some vacant lot. And it's just like really super cool store or whatever it says. And Aubrey Plaza, of course, works there. And, you know, her, her range as an actress is just so great. At one point, she's trying to communicate to Andy. Oh, the best part is when she thinks Andy is fucking losing his mind. She doesn't believe that the doll is real, of course. Even though, like, you know, weird things happen. Like, her boyfriend's missing. Her cat's missing. Everything's fine. Um, she sees him because the doll can control, like, the TV and all this stuff. And replay things Andy said because it has a microphone in it. First of all, I wouldn't have a doll like that because I would assume some weird shit would happen. Although with this type of version doll, I would just take that doll to the gay pride parade, say it, tell it to have a good time, just don't touch my kid in a, any funny ways because we'll have a problem. All right. So she comes in at one pivotal point where Andy's smashing things up like, <laughs> and she does this. This is her good acting range. <gasps> I had a thought. I bet, wait. Oh, I'm sad. I'm sad. I'm scared because my son's acting. Okay. What's wrong with you? I'm gonna take you to work. You're gonna take him to work. Take him to a psych ward, you crazy bitch. What the? She's gonna take him to work. She won't come and work with me at the super duper Target where we're gonna have a sale tonight. Conveniently enough for the release of the new buddy guy. Thought almost there. Um, almost. Um, pancakes with syrup. Bre breakfast tomorrow. I want to make breakfast tomorrow because I keep forgetting to eat. Because uh, thoughts take up lots of space. Um, so the very end of the movie is just this cliche slasher thing where, of course, everything goes haywire at this event at the store. People die. Uh, Furbies come alive. It could have been that idea, that last five, ten minutes could have been a great movie if it was anything else. They could have made it like Gremlins where it's like a group of toys come suddenly alive, start attacking, killing people. That would be scary. That would be interesting. It's a clean slate. Go from there. I don't know why they call this child's play. I don't know why, you call, other than to retain the rights and call this Chucky. It was such crap. The logic in this movie, there was none. Like, there was, like, not one bit of logic. And I know, it's a horror movie. It's not supposed to have any. But it was just such shit. And listen, I can put up with a lot of shit, okay? I've seen Hereditary... I thought that was kind of good. I've seen that boring movie, The Witch. I've seen a lot of crap movies in my time, okay? But this was just like, every five seconds, I'm rolling my eyes at a movie. It's bad. And, you know, I talked with Eric like a year ago about the Halloween remake. Yeah, there were certain points in that movie where I was like, okay, this is kind of ridiculous. But I was never like, oh, what the fuck? What the fuck is this? What is that? And by the way, the audience that saw this movie wasn't scared at all. They were laughing. If this had been played as like, okay, Best way to sum up this entire movie, and I'll get over it right now. It's like if the creators of Scary Movie did a riff on Child's Play, you would have this movie. But this is still meant to be taken seriously. Mark Hamill sucked as the voice actor. Aubrey Plaza just... I, I, who does she blow in Hollywood? Does she really give good... Does she give good throat? Does she give good layering? Is that it? Maybe it can go... She could take it all the way down here and just kind of you know, grab the dick with her fucking larynx. She must do a great head to get working anything i don't what does she do <laughs> uh the kid who played andy annoying uh the other kids who are like his friends at the very end too they all have like all these axes and weapons and they're gonna beat the shit out of a dead doll and i'm like Ugh. like they should have just beat a dead horse because that's what they did by remaking this fucking movie uh and that was that was the end i'm sure it's set up for a sequel i don't plan on ever seeing the sequel i could care less if it's free one night and i'm you know in a vegetative state that's the time i watch the sequel so i give this you know one big saggy old man limp dick not five hard you know rock hard youthful 19 to 20 year old hard on cocks that would be awesome like four of them that's my movie rating now there trademark that four hard cocks would be great this was one droopy old man two inch jewish guy dick that was that's what this movie was sucked garbage and thank you for watching my review